friends and family, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're new here, please subscribe and then click the notification bell and choose all so that you get notified each time I upload a new video. Also, let me know if you're a new subscriber in the comments, I'd love to say hi. I'm really looking forward to bringing today's projects to you, full of love and fun. Today we are going to enjoy various painting techniques from staining with paint to using a crackle medium. There's something for everyone today. These beautiful Valentine themed decor pieces all coordinate together and are budget friendly using most supplies from the Dollar Tree. Like always, the supplies I use are in the description box below, but if you have any questions at all, please add a comment and I'll be sure to get back to you. With all that being said, let's begin today's creative journey and have some fun making these absolutely gorgeous, high-end looking Valentine's decor pieces. Let's start with project number one, which is a reminder that all you need is love. With all of our projects today, I'll be using this Rust-Oleum chalk paint in blush pink, which is my favorite shade of pink, and I got this on Amazon. I also started with a long wood sign and a mop head, both of which Dollar Tree carries all year round. Besides that, I used black vinyl from Dollar Tree and my Cricut. I started by using my heat gun to remove the stubborn sticker and it came off easily. Next, I applied two good coats of blush paint on all sides. Once it was dry, it was time to apply the vinyl. This is the part where you can really customize this to say anything you want. The possibilities are endless here. I wanted a bold statement and this one fit the piece well. Now, once I started pulling up the transfer tape, I realized that the layers of paint were not quite dry enough. So it pulled up a tiny bit of the paint but I actually liked how it looked because you could see the white underneath and it looked a little bit distressed. So I used the transfer tape on the other parts of the sign to try to imitate my happy mistake. Next, take your Dollar Tree mop head and cut off the ends, about one and a half to two inches wide. Using hot glue, attach the mop head pieces to your sign Voila, this completes project number one. Moving on to DIY number two. This beautiful little sign will bring a festive touch to any room or tiered tray. First, I gathered a piece of scrapbook paper from a book I have which has wood grain looking paper from a couple years ago at Michael's. I picked it up on clearance. Besides that, the little BU sign and the vinyl came from Dollar Tree. The first step is to remove the backing from the frame. Use that backing as a template to cut out a piece of scrapbook paper, any design of your choice. Next. I used the vinyl that I cut out with my Cricut to say, I will always love you. When using transfer tape on paper like we're doing here, be sure to not use the rubbing tool. Just use your fingers to gently press down the vinyl and then slowly and carefully peel back the transfer tape. This will help you to avoid tearing the top layer off of your paper. Next, add the backing back to the frame and easy as that, this completes project number two. Moving on to DIY number three, Be Mine. 
For this DIY, I gathered my Rust-Oleum blush pink chalk paint, white chalk paint I picked up at Walmart, and then the roll of black vinyl and the little sign are from Dollar Tree. Although I thought the sign was a cute idea, I knew with just a couple of changes I could make it match my decor style. So let's jump in and see how a few small changes can make a big difference. First, I turned the sign over and decided to use the back. Using a sponge dabber from Dollar Tree, I dabbed on the paint. This serves two purposes. It prevents the paint from accidentally getting on the sides of the project and it also gives the appearance of a softer texture. After doing two coats, it's time to add our words. To get the heart at the end of mine in pink, I used black vinyl and then just painted the heart with the pink paint. I touched it up to be sure it was extra pink and this completes DIY number three. If you're enjoying today's video, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'd love to keep you up to date with the latest and greatest projects here at DIY with Erica and have you join my subscriber family. Don't forget to click the notification bell and set your notifications to all so that you're notified each time I release a new video. Next, we move on to DIY number four, a sweet little plant box just in time for Valentine's Day, but cute enough to leave out all spring. You'll need one of these little wood planter boxes from Dollar Tree, washi tape in black, I got mine on Amazon for super cheap, and again, we are using chalk paint in white and blush paint. First, I attempted to pry the word off of the box. It seemed easy at first, but as you can see, it turned into a struggle and I actually broke the word by accident. We'll have to hope it comes together later. In the meantime, I sanded down the remaining glue until I had a smooth surface to paint. A quick cleanup, I wanted to paint the front and these sides white with white chalk. We're gonna leave the rest of it in its natural state. I took double-sided mounting tape that I picked up at Dollar Tree and I added it to two of the sides. This will give the ends of the washi tape something to stick onto because the washi tape is not the stickiest tape on its own. At the end of the project, you can cover the back of this with craft paper and you won't be able to see the mounting tape or all the edges of the washi tape. Finally, take the washi tape and place it in stripes on the front of the box. Do this all the way to the bottom. It's time to work on the love. I dabbed it with a blush pink paint and put the pieces together with super glue. And then it was time to reattach it to its box using hot glue. And just like that, we are done with this adorable planter box, project number four. to project number five, I love you to the moon and back. I started with these three hearts and black vinyl from Dollar Tree, along with the blush and white paints we've been using through this video. Besides that, the small bottle you see is crackle medium. 
I found mine on clearance at Hobby Lobby for 62 cents. First, I removed the sticker with my heat gun, and then I sanded the residue off until it felt smooth. Next, the most difficult part of this project wasn't the crackle paint. The most difficult part was covering the sides of these hearts with paint. It took three good coats to cover the old color. For the back of the signs, which are now going to be the front of our project, you can cover those with craft paper at the end and it will cover the brightly colored hearts and leave a professional look. For now, paint the backs of the hearts white, giving it two to three good coats. Once your hearts are thoroughly dry, it's time to add the crackle medium. The first thing is you want to paint your strokes in the direction you want the crackles to be. Next, be generous with your crackle medium. Don't hold back. Give the front and sides a good thick coat with as few strokes as possible. On the bottle, it says to wait until the crackle paint is tacky before you add your next level of paint but my experience tells me to let it dry all the way before adding the next color of paint. You get deeper crackles that way. So once the crackle medium was dry, I added the blush paint on top of it. Again, add a nice thick layer of paint and keep your brush strokes to a minimum to achieve the best look. The best part about crackle painting is when the cracks appear right before your eyes. I love this part. It never gets old to me. Feel free to use a heat gun to really help bring out the details. Next, it's time to add our vinyl. I'm setting up my hearts in the same angle that they will be when they are sitting on a shelf so that the words will be straight. You'll see what I mean during the reveal. I added the vinyl to each heart, and this completes DIY number five. Friends, we are halfway through this video, and I hope you've enjoyed DIYing with me today. Please take a quick break and let me know you like this video by giving me a thumbs up. Each and every like you give helps to support me and my channel. Also, please don't forget to subscribe. It's free. Once you click the subscribe button, click the bell to set your notifications to all so that you get notified each time I upload a new video. Now let's move on to DIY number six, button up. I started with an eight by 10 canvas and a small heart decor piece from Dollar Tree. I had buttons which I found on clearance at Michael's, a screwdriver to remove staples, and chalk paint in blush pink. The first step is to remove the staples from the frame so that you can remove the canvas. You can also cut the canvas out, but I like the back to look clean, so I removed everything from the wood frame. Next. I'm going to paint the darker side of the canvas with the blush chalk paint. After one good coat, I let it dry. Next, using a stapler, stretch the canvas back onto the frame and secure it on each side. I cut off the excess canvas to leave us with a nice clean slate to work with. I took the black heart from Dollar Tree and glued it so that the blank side was facing out. If you don't have a decor piece like this, you can draw and then paint a heart in black and that will give you the same effect. It's just to use to really give our button heart a solid shape. 
After that was in place, I started arranging the buttons, working on the outside edges first, then I filled in the inside. Notice that I place them where I want them first, and then I reach for the hot glue and stick them to the black heart. And friends, that's all it takes to make this beautiful, heartwarming Valentine decor piece. Right, we are on a roll, so let's move on to project number seven, Home with Love. We are going to take this little barn house from Dollar Tree, and at first I tried to pull off the sticker it had on it, but then I realized that it didn't really matter because I was going to cover it anyway. To cover it, I took a piece of scrap of paper that I got in a pack from Michaels. I used the house as a template to cut out the paper. Then you'll see how I run my finger or fingernail along the edge of the top to cut out the edge of our little roof. Once it was all trimmed, I added a little bit of hot glue and stuck the paper to the house. Next, I took this simple love word from Dollar Tree, which used to be red glitter, and spray painted it with blush pink spray paint by Rust-Oleum and then I glued it to the front using hot glue. That was literally all it took to turn this little barn into a house of love. We are on a roll, so let's keep going and jump right into project number eight, Simple Love. First, I gathered my supplies. I got the love sign in the wreath form section at Dollar Tree, along with the mop head, also from Dollar Tree. You'll need spray paint in matte black, twine with a needle, I used a canvas needle, and some beads. I'm recycling beads that I got in a strand after Christmas clearance at Walmart. The first step was to spray paint the love sign and then set it aside to dry. It took only one coat of paint to cover the gold. Next, I took the strand of beads and took them apart. I wanted my beads to be black, white, and blush pink instead of black, white, and natural. So we are going to take the natural colored beads and paint them pink. I added a small amount of blush paint to a bag and added the beads. I took them out and let them dry on parchment paper. Start threading. Using a canvas needle, I threaded the beads in the same pattern as they were originally. If any of the beads got stuck on the needle, I just set them aside so I could make the hole a little bigger and then thread them again.
Once it was the length that I wanted for our sign, I tied off the end and then I used a lighter to get rid of all of the fuzz that was left over from the twine poking through the beads. Now we move on to the sign. I added hot glue to half of the word and glued that to the mop head. I did the same to the other side and then made small adjustments. After that, all we need to do is tie on the beaded hanger and then we are done. This unique little sign makes me smile every time I see it. And here it is, simple love. For project number nine, we are going to make a lovely garland using the same beads we just painted. I threaded the beads with the same pattern and it made a six foot strand. You'll also need this spray paint and blush pink and this pack of grapevine hearts from Dollar Tree. Because our garland is six feet long, I'm adding five hearts, but I also wanted even space between the heart in the beginning and the heart at the end. Um, if that makes sense. So I wanted them all equally spaced along with a foot of space at the end of each garland that was blank without any hearts. So I decided that each space needed to be 12 inches, including in the beginning and the end. And using Christmas tree ornament hangers, I attached the hearts to the garland. And this is our result. Look at how easy it was to make this lovely garland, which can be used in a variety of ways, including on a tear tray, hanging on a wall, perhaps on a coffee table. There's so many uses for this type of garland. Last but definitely not least, let's move on to this sweet heart of love. You'll need a wood heart and a wood ward from Dollar Tree. I also have black chalkboard paint from Dollar Tree, white chalk paint that I picked up at Walmart, and Rust-Oleum paint and blush pink that I got on Amazon. I removed the twine hanger from the top and set it aside to add it back on later. Next, I used painter's tape to cover the pieces in the back since I want them to remain a natural color. In order to turn our paint into stain, I watered it down as you can see in the little cups on the right. There was no rhyme or reason or exact mixture. I just put some paint in the cup and then added some water until it was a runny consistency. Using a baby wipe, I applied black and white stains to the heart sign. The white was a little bit difficult to see, so I did two coats of the white. Next, I used the same technique on the love word, but I used blush pink. It showed up very light, so I used a paintbrush to use the last of the stain and add more color. Once those pieces were dry, I placed the word where I wanted it and flipped over the sign. I used a pen to mark where the glue will go. Once you remove the heart, you'll see where the glue needs to go and the parts that you'll want to avoid. I then scribbled in the parts where I want the glue to go so that when I'm actually working with the hot glue, I don't have to think about what parts to avoid. Adding the love word with hot glue was easy and adding the twine hanger back, this piece is complete.
friends, I genuinely hope that you've enjoyed DIYing with me today. Please let me know that you like this video by giving it a thumbs up. It really makes a difference for my channel. And if you haven't subscribed yet, now is the time. Don't forget to subscribe before the end of the video. It's free. Also, if you are on Instagram, find me at DIY with Erica. I'd love to share with you on Instagram and also see what's going on in your world. My subscribers are a positive and supportive group and I am thankful for every single one of you. Thanks for your support, friends and family. You mean the world to me. Thank you.